The U.S. Greeting Card Association estimates that worldwide, we Americans will send about a billion Valentines this year. It's the second most popular card sending occasion right behind Christmas. And it's all about love. Or is it? WXXI's Brenda Tremblay, morning host on Classical 91.5, discovered a trove of Valentines that might make you flinch. How do I love thee? Let me count the ways in pink gift boxes, glittering packages, and red roses. At upscale boutiques like Parkley in Rochester, New York, you can even smell the chocolate while you look for a card inspired by the love sonnets of Shakespeare or Percy Shelley. Nothing in the world is single where fountains of chocolate mingle with rivers of wine. But there's a dark side to all this love, and it's found in the archives of the National Museum of Play at the Strong, one of the largest history museums in the United States. Nick Ricketts curates more than 1,300 valentines in the collection here. The oldest one dates back to 1825. But the observance itself is much older. It flowered in the third century following the martyrdom of a Roman priest named Valentine, who legend had it, married young soldiers and their sweethearts against the law. The first reference in relation to personal love was made by Geoffrey Chaucer, and that would be in the 14th century. And since then, this tradition grew up of lovers exchanging gifts, tokens, and perhaps written mementos um, to each other on that day, February 14th. For this was on St. Valentine's Day, when every bird cometh there to choose his mate. In a love poem honoring a royal engagement, Chaucer may have been the first to connect Valentine's Day to romance, but the symbolism goes back far beyond the 14th century. Early on, uh, symbols of Valentine's Day that we recognize still, such as the heart, the heart with an arrow through it, and uh, Cupid with his bow and arrow, which uh, came from Roman mythology, actually. Um, those were adopted early on, too, so that if you wrote a valentine to someone, you would put a heart on it, even the way we would do it today if we sent a love note. But there is a dark side to the tradition. It's the vinegar or black valentine, and there are dozens of them preserved in the archives of the National Museum of Play at the Strong. These so-called vinegar valentines were printed by the millions and sold for a penny each. People actually sent poetry as hate mail, often anonymously, on Valentine's Day from around the early 1840s until around the 1960s. They truly do seem insulting by our standards and they uh, break all of our rules. Some of them are very sexist, some of them are racist. They say things to people that we, we wouldn't think of saying today, but uh, it was seen as humor then. No one was safe from ridicule. You are a nerve destroyer, reads one verse. When a pig's getting slaughtered, the noise that it makes is sweeter by far than your trills and your shakes. They very often pick on women for their modes of dress. Um, they pick on them for doing things in public that deviate from whatever the accepted norm was, and who knows what that was at the time. They pick on them for being bossy to their husbands. There are several that say never marry an athletic woman because she will uh, uh, beat you. <laughs> they also pick on uh, heavy people, both women and men, if you're fat. If you overindulge in, in any way, Musicians, they pick on musicians for practicing too loud and too long and waking all the neighbors up. If getting randomly insulted wasn't bad enough, the insults came in verse, limericks, or Horatian ode form. Instead of working to earn your pay, reads one, you're boozing or sleeping half the day. Men became targets for a variety of reasons. Men were picked on if they were henpecked, if they stayed at home with the children, uh, what was wrong with them. Again, if they deviated at all from whatever the 
accepted social norm was um, they could be picked on. They were most often uh, picked on as being drunks, too. Nick Ricketts says he sees history and humor embedded in the vitriol. This example mocks a man for illegally smuggling alcohol. It's easy to date it because obviously it's during prohibition and it's funny to me that you would send a valentine to a bootlegger. How would you know he was a bootlegger because bootlegging was illegal unless perhaps you were one of his customers. So that's one of the, the funnier ones I think that we have now. We know of course that it's from the late 1920s. Many vinegar valentines targeted certain professions, barbers, butchers, and teachers. They were lithographed in bright colors that even today are hard to reproduce. Most featured artwork by famous cartoonists of the day, such as C.J. Howard, whose comics would inspire a poet to add a nasty verse underneath. With them, it seemed no occupation was sacred. Um, uh, if you were married, unmarried, a widow, they would pick on you still. You'd send a verse, derogatory verse, to a, a widow just because she was a widow. It, it makes little sense to us today. To make matters worse, Rickett says, in the days before postage, you might have paid for your vinegar valentine, expecting a love note and getting hate mail instead. Now, bear in mind, at least as many heartfelt valentines were um, circulated, and so that was how you communicated with each other. And in some ways, the Victorian era was more straight-laced, but people had to let off steam somehow. Rickett says these rude tokens of communication have simply evolved into today's social media tools, such as Facebook and Twitter, where people can censure and insult each other with little regard for anyone's feelings. He says incivility is nothing new. It's something I've thought about a lot lately in lieu of recent events, and it's hard not to get caught up in what is going on today and to think that it's, that it's worsening. But when you see this kind of thing, you realize that if you had the means at all to exchange information with other people, it's nothing new. I think people are always both good and bad, and many of us are a mix of all of those things. And uh, one of the reasons to collect historical documents like this is to help remind us that we are humans and this is what we do.